let's continue talking about inflation and NDC for ECC. I've done another video on inflation on those basic elements on how we assess compensation events in terms of inflation or when inflation kicks in. If you are interested, you can go back to that video and have a look. Today, we are focusing on one very specific matter. And that matter is how do we adjust the total of the prices of a target contract? NEC sets just apply a formula. That formula is PAF over 1 plus PAF. You multiply that by the divide cost plus fee, and then you adjust the same amount on the target. How does that come by? Some of you may be very interested in the first principle on how that formula comes by. And today, if that is you, I'm going to prove that for you through some mathematical calculations. First of all, let me show you the contract and I will explain a little bit what exactly I'm going to talk about. And then I will do the calculations for you. If you are interested, this video will be for you. But sometimes I say, uh, actually we are the users here. If you are the users, you know there is a formula in there, you just use it. Whether or not you understand it or not, actually it doesn't really matter because life will still go on and then you, you, your, your work will be fine. But if you really understand the first principle of that formula, it means you understand quite clearly what is happening behind the scene in here. So let me show you the screen here, the um, uh, contract. This is secondary option clauses. Option X1, we talk about price adjustment for inflation. The focus here will be X1.4 on the screen here, X1.4. It applies to option C and D. And you do realize there is a formula in there. PAF over one plus PAF. What is it trying to talk about? It tries to talk about for each time when the amount due is, is assessed, we need to adjust the total of the prices. So what is total of the prices here? The total of the prices here is the target. And I'm going to explain why do we need to adjust this total of the prices by this formula, PAF over 1 plus PAF. So first of all, let me read the whole clause first. And that is what we are going to prove. <coughs> so here it says, each time the amount due is assessed, the amount for price adjustment is added to the total of the prices, is added to the target, which is what? Which is the change to the price for work done to date, so the change to PWDD, since the last assessment of the amount due, multiplied by, multiplied by, PAF over 1 plus PAF. So this one is what we are trying to prove, this whole formula. Apply this whole formula to the target, and that is how we should adjust the target. So what is PWDD? PWDD under option C and D is defined cost plus fee. So define cost plus fee time PAF over one plus PAF. And that is what we are going to prove. If we think about this, this price for work done today, every time when a contractor applies for that payment application, they submit to the project manager the price for work done today in accordance with the defined cost plus fee. If you go to a shop and buy some goods in there, you look at the invoice, there are some numbers in there, the pound size in there, or dollar size in there. And um, if you think about this, that number has already taken into account inflation, which means that number, that figure, is the current value of the commodity of, or, or, or of that good. By the same token, when the contractor sub submits to you, the project manager, the price for work done to date, the defined cost plus fee in there is the current value. So let's label that. Let's label that as defined cost plus fee current. I simply put a C in here. It means current. So this one is the formula that we are going to prove. So let me show you a whiteboard here, and then I will do some calculations for you. First of all, what is a target contract? A target contract means there is a target. So let's call that target, this blue line here, let's call that target 
total of the prices. If that is option C, then it is small letter to the T of the prices. If that is option D, then that is big letter to the T of the prices. Now, let's park that aside. But if you understand the difference between the small letter to the T and the big letter to the T, then you understand option C and D. Let's park that aside. Let's just call the total of the prices. Let's say this is option C. And uh, let me label that total of the prices. Let's call that TP. We are going to compare this TP, the total of the prices, by the price for for work done to date, because that is a con that is that is the um uh, target that is that is a target contract mechanism, pain share gain share mechanism. What is PWDD? PWDD under option C and D, we do that by defined cost plus fee, <coughs> and that is the current value. That is the current value. Now, everything is fine without inflation. Now, inflation kicks in. Inflation kicks in, then under the contract, we understand that there is no mechanism for the contractor and the client to share the effect of the inflation. And that is why when inflation kicks in, we need to adjust the target in order to make sure the target goes in line with PWDD. Otherwise, there will be some, some sort of sharing of that inflation between the client and the contractor. So let's say if it is inflation, whatever effects of that inflation on this PWDD, we need to adjust that accordingly and change the target TP here. Let's say due to inflation, the target will be adjusted upwards to TP1. And let's call this adjustment X. So the problem is, what is X now? We understand X will be equal to whatever influence of the inflation on PWDD. And we understand PWDD is defined cost plus fee, the current value. Therefore, in order to understand X, we need to understand the influence, influence of the inflation on PWDD. What is, that what is that influence? That influence will be defined cost plus fee, the current value, minus the defined cost plus fee at the base value. And you see, calls that base date levels. And that is the effect of inflation on PWDD. Therefore, defined cost plus fee current minus defined cost plus fee base, I simply call that B, will be equal to X. So we need to prove this equation equals to that formula that we have already talked about in the contract. So let's do some mathematics here. What tools do we have on our table? The tool that we have on our table is what we call PAF. What is PAF? Price adjustment factor, let's say 4%. So it simply means, it simply means you compare the change in the index on a certain date and compare that with the base date levels. And NEC put it quite simply, they simply compare the values on a certain date with the base date leveled, let's say 4%, let's say 4%. Uh, this inflation matter is actually quite complex. Uh, can we simply compare the two days like this? Actually, there are further considerations, but under NEC, NEC option X1 simply says on a certain date for the assessment of the amount due, you compare the index on that date and then compare that date with the base date and then you come up with a certain percentage and let's call that PAF. Therefore, if we understand what a PAF is, the defined cost plus fee base level times one plus, let's say 4% is the inflation will be equal to defined cost plus fee, the current level. 
but we don't know whether it is four percent because this is it keeps changing and therefore let's replace this four percent by paf that is the concept so dc plus f b one plus paf equals dc plus v current therefore dc plus f baseline equals dc plus f current plus one plus paf let's substitute the whole thing back to the formula back to this formula then what is happening here what is happening here is x dc dc plus f c minus dc plus f b equals dc plus f c minus copy everything in dc plus f c over 1 plus p a f okay so carry on 1 plus p a f so what is happening here common factor i'm not sure how good you are on mathematics i almost forgot i almost forgot everything now but hopefully i can still do it minus one then what is that p a f over one plus p a f remaining bit will be d c plus f c so what is this p a f over one plus p a f times d c plus f c is what is p w d d for the assessment of that amount due to be exact to be exact this is not p w d d this is the difference of PWDD for this assessment compared with the last assessment. And you see, this is X. This is exactly the formula that we talk about in clause X 1.4. That is how we come up with this formula PAF over 1 plus PAF mathematically. So I hope you understand all this. Otherwise, we are the user here. We are the user here. We apply that formula and we will be fine. But this PAF over 1 plus PAF is actually not too difficult to derive. It's just some, it's just some arithmetics that we need to go through almost mechanically. And that is mathematics, by the way. So I hope this is useful for you. This is inflation. Let me know how much more do you want to understand this X1? Because I realize in this country, I'm in England, in this country, people are quite interested in this X1. Uh, probably because this option X1 is quite popular in NEC for ECC. Let me know anything that you want me to explain more. And then I may, I may make a further video for this one. Otherwise, next time round, I may go back to task services order or uh, task services contract and explain another matter, another issue on that TSC contract under NEC4. I hope you like it. Leave me comments. Give me a like. Give me some subscribe. I know this is, this is very old school, but click the subscribe button and click the notification button. Oh, this is very old school, but I hope you won't mind. Just do it. Do me a favor. Motivate me a little bit. And then I will just keep doing this. Thank you very much.